welcome back. We've got an e-ticket now. Welcome back. Oh, I missed it. I, I... You, missed, you missed your preview? Well, you know I'm bad with dates. I, I made my AP Which like, ones were we talking thing. about? The ones on the calendar oh. or with people? Aw, aw. <laughs> Dramble me keeps all the puke in your faces from flying across all places. What if it told time, though? I mean, you already have to charge the ant? it. The ant? Oh, this. You already, have to, you already have to charge it, right? I think it's like, Nick, why did you kill the ant? Maybe he could tell time. No. I just was scared by the smoke machine. Thanks for the job, oh, wait, wait. Tom. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com, and here now are the top Disney Park stories from around the world for May 20th, 2022. George Calagridis, the president of Segment Development for Enrichment for Disney Parks Experiences and Products, has announced his impending retirement. Calagridis, who served as president of the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resort at points during his career, will leave the company after more than 50 years. The University of Central Florida graduate was part of the opening team for Walt Disney World, having been hired as a busboy at Disney's Contemporary Resort in September of 1971. Calagridis was honored with a window on Main Street USA at the Magic Kingdom last fall. And he's pictured here with uh, President Jeff Volley and Chairman of the Division Josh Tomorrow. He's currently serving as a global ambassador for the 50th anniversary. But what a, I mean, what a storied career George has had across the entire division, but um, mainly at Walt Disney World. I remember when I was very young, um, he worked at the Grand Flirty. He was, he was in charge of the Grand Flirty, and I remember that. We used to stay there a lot when I was a kid. Um, not on our own money. We had family that had a lot of money. It was nice enough to take us along. But, um, and obviously George has had many, many roles and been here for a long time. So uh, we wish him a very happy and well-deserved retirement. In the wake of that announcement, Chairman Josh DeMauro announced a reorganization of the Parks Experiences and Products Department. Uh, Calagridis' domain of segment development and enrichment will be looped into the new Experiences Portfolio and Disney Signature Experiences Department under Thomas Maslam. Stephanie Young will become the president of Disney Vacation Club, Adventures and Expeditions, and Disney Institute National Geographic Live, reporting directly to Maslam. Taja Filipatos will replace Young as president of Consumer Products, Games, and Publishing, also under DeMar. The first Walt Disney World store will be opening on iDrive in Orlando, Florida on May 31st alongside that new art installation. The ribbon-like art installation on the Hollywood Plaza parking garage will animate images of the golden Fab 50 statues when it is initially turned on. It will eventually feature other characters and celebrations as well. Meanwhile, in the building will be the Walt Disney World Store, combining merchandise, ticket sales, and the first-ever interactive Disney Vacation Club Virtual Discovery Station. The Disney Vacation Club Virtual Discovery Station will have floor-to-ceiling screens that can transport guests to theme parks, resorts, and cruise destinations around the world via first-person virtual tours, photo galleries, and videos. This is really interesting for a number of reasons. Um, I particularly remember there were a couple of these. Disney Vacation Club opened uh, stores, if you will, in malls across the country. They were called uh, Doorway to Dreams. There was one we went to um, in Long Island. Um, I think there was one in Chicago as well. Um, and I don't think the concept really worked um, because it was purely a Disney Vacation Club timeshare sales facility. This, to me, seems like another attempt at that where it's like, well, if we share the cost with, with the rest of Disney World, well, then it becomes more affordable. And also the space itself um, probably has things that, that generate revenue more regularly, which is theme park merchandise and especially in Orlando, theme park ticket sales. Um, but then Vacation Club still has their opportunity to have a space where they can sell people um, on the product. I, my, I suspect this is a test 
and this will be a thing they'll roll out to key markets across the country, obviously like Doorway to Dreams markets where um, there's probably a bit of money. And uh, we'll see what happens. That's my theory. I don't have any inside information, but the, the, just the way this was announced and the way it sounds to me, it sounds like it's, it's, it's a test for something nationwide, maybe, or maybe even globally. The lineup for the Eat to the Beat concert series at the 2022 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival has been announced, and the concert series is presented by Florida Blue Medicare. Both local bands and internationally recognized artists have been invited to this year's concert series. They'll be performing at the America Gardens Theater stage. The full lineup includes July 14th and 15th, The Baja Men. July 16th through the 18th is Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Uh, July 29th and 30th, Taylor Dane. July 31st through August 1st, Tiffany. August 5th through the 8th is Joey Fatone and Friends. August 12th and 13th, The Devon Almond Project. August 14th and 15th, Christopher Cross. August 19th through the 20th, Journey with lead vocalist Stephen O'Gary. Uh, August 21st and 22nd is Air Supply. September 2nd and 3rd, Southern Avenue. September 4th and 5th, Chris Allen and David Cook. September 9th and 10th, new this year, Hoobastank. Remember them? Uh, September 16th to the 17th, also new, is Los Amigos Invisibles. I'm sure I butchered that. Uh, September 23rd to the 24th is BB Mac. September 30th through October 1st, a new act, Stokely. October 2nd and 3rd, Sheila E. October 7 and 8, Mark Wills. Uh, October 9th and 10th, 38 Special. The 23rd and 24th is Billy Ocean. The 28th through Halloween is Hanson. And November 4th through the 7th to close it out, Boys to Men. Guests can secure a spot at an Eat to the Beat show with a dining package, which will be available beginning May 24th. Meanwhile, the global marketplace food booths for the Food and Wine Festival have also been announced. And new this year, the Fry Basket. The description reads, snack on crispy French fries or yucca fries seasoned to perfection. The Epcot International Food and Wine Festival begins on July 14th, but some booths do not open until August 15th. If you're looking for a quick stop for a snack in world nature at Epcot, you can pick up a pepperoni pizza roll from Sunshine Seasons at the Land. Naturally, we had to see if this was up to snuff, so we popped in to give it a try. The pepperoni pizza roll is $10.99 and served with pasta salad. Check out the review at WDWNT.com. To infinity and beyond, a new sneak peek at the upcoming Disney Pixar film Lightyear has arrived at Disney's Hollywood Studios as we approach the release of the film next month. The Lightyear sneak peek will take over at Walt Disney Presents in Disney's Hollywood Studios starting May 20th, and Lightyear releases exclusively in theaters June 17th. Sneak peek will also come to Disneyland Paris and the Disney Cruise Line at a later date. A new portable charging kit by OtterBox is now available for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. We found the kit at Celebrity 5 and Dime at Hollywood Studios for $49.95. Includes a battery pack and a 3-in-1 cable. It advertises up to 14 hours of battery, but the pack does not come fully charged, so don't expect to use it right away. There are two stickers on the packaging, one featuring the 50th Castle logo and the other with the partner statue and Walt and Mickey. This was from the Castle Collection. The power bank is made specifically for iPhones, but it says it works with other devices too. The white power bank has a large sticker on it featuring the partner statue again. The sticker is textured, feels like a good quality that won't easily peel. Um, I know many of you will go in the comments and write, well, I have fuel rods. Fuel rods are great until the person that has to refill the machine doesn't show up. And then the whole park is out of fuel rods and you're in trouble. It happens more often than you think, but um, you can always get a power bank with a sticker on it if you want. The beach area of Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground will be closed starting Monday, May 23rd for a refurbishment. The work will take place during daytime hours only, so guests may hear construction noises between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Refurbishment is expected to be completed, uh, and then the beach will reopen to guests in early July. The beach area of Fort Wilderness was relocated in late 2019 to make way for Reflections, a Disney lakeside resort. Of course, Reflections was canceled or at least delayed. Who knows? Disney doesn't want to talk about it. With an expected announcement that was supposed to happen today, we have heard that Avengers Campus will officially open on June 27, 2022 at Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. The press event is expected to take place June 24th through the 26th, with annual pass holder previews happening sometime between June 15th and the 20th. It could end up delayed, but that's not what we are hearing, even though today they again refused to announce it. What we heard today was they actually refused to announce the date because we had announced the date and Paris wants to, uh, the words I, I, I was told were, uh, control the broadcast of the date instead of, you know, making us look right. So, uh, 
Um, we still expect it to be that date. We haven't heard anything different. It's just a slight delay in the announcement of that date. So maybe people forget that WWNT said it. They are that petty, by the way. Uh, a new series of concept art, though, was released that was supposed to be with the announcement of the date, but we got to see a bit more of the campus, uh, which is scheduled to open again in early summer. Uh, concept art for the retheme of Rock and Roller Coaster called Avengers Assemble Flight Force confirms that it will not only feature Iron Man, but also Captain Marvel. And as we've seen before, the ride vehicles resemble Iron Man's suit. It'll have a light-up LED facade on the building, and the marquee, of course, was recently installed. The main shop of Avengers Campus will be Mission Equipment, as seen in the concept art inside, uh, it's inside the Stark Industries warehouse. It'll be similar to California's web supplier shop. Meanwhile, Pym Kitchen will be a buffet inspired by Ant-Man. Paris's version of the Pym Test Kitchen uh, will have food large and small. Uh, it's a buffet, by the way, here. Um, at least the art shows similar dishes to what we see in California at the counter service, but that doesn't mean that's what they're going to serve. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Disneyland Paris will also have their own version of Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, but it'll be called Spider-Man Web Adventure. Uh, though it is a different name, it'll be nearly identical. Stark Factory will be a quick service restaurant unique to this version of Avengers Campus. This was the uh, Blockbuster Cafe. The giant Hulkbuster Iron Man suit is on display at the center of the factory-themed dining room. The final piece of art showcases heroes walking around the campus. Sam Wilson's Captain America is visible on the Quinjet platform. Of course, we also saw him in that other concept art that was released this week. Uh, Thor and the Dora Milaje walk with children on the ground around the Avengers deployment vehicle, the ADV, which will transport characters. Disney has filed a new patent for physical and digital effects to be reset on a ride vehicle between load and unload stations. What this means is that effects would be triggered throughout the attraction causing physical or digital changes to the vehicle, so it has a different appearance than it did at the beginning. The vehicle would then be reset back to its original configuration before guests load uh, again. The figure uh, you're looking at now shows how a vehicle looks different at the load station 404 than it does at the unload 406. A wall 410 separates the two stations. The reset of the vehicle would happen out of guest view, either manually or automatically. Another figure shows a car with its headlights, side view mirrors, and fenders popping out on springs. In terms of digital effects, the patent refers to the calibration of screens, projectors, and audio systems. Something kind of like this happens at Smuggler's Run, where the exit hallway responds to how you did on the ride, and it's, it's just lighting and audio. Um, but what they want to do here is, is actually have a ride vehicle, do, which would be the coolest thing. Like, this is something we, I think we hoped for this kind of with Test Track in 2012. I think everyone assumed because you can create a vehicle that it would react in some way. It turns out it affects the ride in uh, zero ways other than your score on a screen. But um, if and when this is ever rolled out, this would be pretty fantastic. For the absolute latest Disney Parks news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back, let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. You can also support the entire team behind this show by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. I very quickly want to mention the unplanned downtime YouTube channel, which deserves a subscription from you. Please go over and subscribe. Uh, you can find it at WDWNT.TV. Um, in fact, uh, myself and Nick LaCicero, who do news tonight, will be on Deep in the Plus the next two weeks. I'll be on uh, helping Rob review the new Rescue Rangers movie on Tuesday. And then uh, the week after, Nick is going to be reviewing the new Obi-Wan uh, series on Disney Plus there as well. Um, but also, some of your favorite shows from this channel are moving over to unplanned downtime this summer. So if you want to continue to catch WDW News Tonight live on Thursdays and you want to keep getting boxed in on Fridays, our unboxing show, um, you're going to need to subscribe to the Unplanned Downtime channel. So make sure you do that. Please go support this channel. We have a lot of great creative programming uh, that we provide every week over there, and the uh, lineup is only going to grow. And as well, if you like news shows like this one, we have one completely dedicated just to the entertainment side of the Disney company, which is 
fittingly called Disney Entertainment News Today. That airs on Tuesdays over on that channel. Rob Whiteside, very similar to the show, delivers all the Disney Entertainment News of the Week to you. So again, lots of reasons to go check out Unplanned Downtime. For the Worldwide Leader in Disney Parks News, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Unplanned Downtime, a new home for creative, innovative, and outlandish programming made for Disney fans, including Cosmic Read Live, discussions and imagineering attractions, Deep in the Plus, reviewing the catalog on Disney Plus, Ink and Paint, celebrating female voices in the Disney fandom, Boxed In, opening mystery packages and viewer mail, Picky Eaters, trying to eat our way across Disney restaurants. WDWN TV RPG, a tabletop adventure set in Tokyo Disney Sea, and more of your favorites. Subscribe now at unplannedDowntime.com. Remember, it's not an accident, it's unplanned downtime. <laughs>